Let's talk quickly about the nature of rights and freedom in a time of coronavirus. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota here on lockdown, lockdown for coronavirus. Uh, and I just want to have a quick discussion. I've been having discussions on Twitter and they're disturbing to me because not because people disagree. OK, I want to lay that out there. But the tone in which people are disagreeing and the tone in which people assume I'm disagreeing, it's being, I think, lost in translation on text message. So I wanted to put out a video about it and just kind of let people know my thoughts on the Corona issue and the nature of rights and freedom. OK. Let's get some groundwork laid really quickly. Coronavirus is a serious thing. It may be worse than is reported, or it could be a, a panic induced by a media, like some doctors have suggested. It, people have suggested both things. I don't know. Neither do you. But we do know that it's at some level serious. Okay? And it's a dangerous virus that can be more dangerous the older you get. Statistically speaking, the older people get, the more dangerous it is to them, which is a little bit interesting because it's often the old and the young that are affected. The young seem to be less at risk of symptoms and uh, fatality from the virus than the old, but they are certainly at risk carriers of the virus and their lack of symptoms could make them potentially more dangerous transmitters of the virus because if they don't have symptoms, you may not know that they have it at all, right? Like there's no reason to get tested if you don't have symptoms, unless you knowingly came into contact with someone who is infected, then you'd want to get tested, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. With all of that in mind, this is a dangerous virus. It's a pandemic. It's a global pandemic uh, that is crossing continents and oceans and all of the natural borders and political borders that we have. So uh, that being said, People should take precautions. I want to be very clear on that. You should take recommended precautions. You should have food supplies if you can manage to have food supplies. If you can work remotely or even take time off, you should consider doing that. You should do the, the things to minimize your uh, contact with people um, outside of your immediate family. You should do things that minimize your expo potential exposure to this virus. Absolutely. And not just for you, but because if you contract it and let's say, let's say you do contract the virus and then you stay home, well, then the virus can run its course on you. And if you're young and healthy, you're probably going to be OK outside of a bad couple of days. It's not a guarantee, but it's probably. But you won't be infecting other people. You won't be spreading it around to a higher risk group. You should take these precautions and you should take them very seriously. That said, I personally start to have problems when a government comes in to enforce my compliance with precautions. And that's when I start to get a little bit anxious. As a lawyer who values freedom and who values our inherent and enumerated rights, I really do have problems. Again, it's not the principle that I have a problem with that people should self-isolate or people should take these precautions. I don't have any problem with those principles. I think people absolutely should do them. And I've taken many precautionary measures myself to limit the amount of, uh, of interactions I have with other people to make sure uh, we do have as much food as we can kind of keep around our house. I am taking those precautions and I hope you are too. I don't need a government to hold me at gunpoint to do those things. And more importantly, I don't want a government to hold me at gunpoint to do those things. Because even though I am taking precautions, I may decide that there's a risk that I deem worth taking. And that is part of the price of freedom. And you may disagree with that risk, but part of your price of freedom is that you do your best to isolate yourself from me as much as I do my best to isolate myself from you. That is the exchange. I don't want a government to lock me in my house and I don't want a government to lock you in yours. 
And I certainly don't want the government to roll out like the National Guard to lock everyone in their homes. And that part hasn't happened yet. And I hope we don't get there because then we're in really different discussions. We're in really, really terrifying discussions. But right now we do have governments closing private businesses. We have governments implementing mandatory curfews and we have governments threatening the free peaceable assembly of gatherings of people with fines jail time and at the end of the day every law is signed with a bullet and that is the scary thing and that's the place we need to caution against are we willing to shoot people who go against whatever rules or precautions we're trying to enforce the guy in kentucky who's locked in his home by armed guard if he leaves his house are we comfortable with the government shooting him your answer may be yes mine is i don't think so i don't like the government shooting people i really don't do i think the guy should stay home absolutely but i'm not sure i want that enforced by a bullet the next question is Let's say there's a peaceful gathering of uh, 50 people in a place and they, they put a ban. They say, no, you can't actually have a meetup with people. Well, none of us have coronavirus. None of us have been traveling. We've all been self-isolated for a while. Now we want to get together. Nope, I'm sorry. You can't do that. Well, we don't want to disassemble. Do you arrest those people or do you shoot them? That's the question that we're coming to here is that at the end of the day, what if they don't comply? <laughs> what happens if they just don't comply? Now we have 200 years of freedom of celebrating that non-compliance. It's hard to just breed that out of people because of one virus. Some people will go along, others won't. Do you shoot them? Do you arrest them? This is the nature of rights. The, free, the right to peaceably assemble uh, doesn't have an asterisk by it. Now, all rights do. There are limitations on everything. I got it. But is this a proper imposition on that right? We're not even asking that question. We're just imposing. And those questions will be years away from being answered. That's the scary thing about our system is that if government does take power, what are we doing about it? How, are, are we even talking about it? Are we even asking questions about it? Or are we so afraid that we're going to give it to them? Are they going to spend political activity, suspend political activities? Are they going to suspend rallies? Is the DNC primary circuit going to be put to a halt? If not, why not? Ask that question, right? If not, why not? If so, are we comfortable with that? What about, uh, what about the election itself? Can we have the election? Will this carry on to November? We don't actually know. And we don't know how long the actual threat will exceed, uh, will, will be around, or if it will be exceeded by a perceived threat, or maybe a push threat. Who knows, right? Once they lock you down, once they start shutting out voices, and they're already trying to shut out voices on corona misinformation, for example. Once they suppress your speech and they suppress your ability to peaceably assemble, how will you know when the crisis ended, if it ever did? What do we do? These are the things that I am cautious against. When you wanna, if you want to understand my perspective on freedom in the time of corona, this is it right here. Ultimately, we are throwing our rights to the government and begging them to protect us from a virus. I'm not okay with that. You can be. That's okay. We can disagree on these things, but I do think they're worth discussing. And I think that discussion should be uh, relatively civil. And if you are discussing with me, if you are discussing with me, know that I am trying to discuss this in completely in good faith. But I am absolutely uh, flabbergasted at, at the different perspectives um, out there. And, and because 
not because I think that they're bad perspectives. I just didn't expect it at all. I didn't expect people to be so willing to give up their freedom because of a viral outbreak uh, of this nature, right? I, I just didn't expect that. I, I don't expect people to be willing to allow a government to shoot its citizens because of a viral outbreak. So anyway, these are just some thoughts I thought I'd share with you guys in a forum that was a little bit more uh, conducive to conveying meaning than text. Because I, I don't actually like arguing with people about this stuff because it gets so charged so quick on places like Twitter. And it, that's not the type of discussion I like to have. I like to explore ideas uh, back and forth with people. So if you have been interacting with me and if you've gotten an impression that it's anything other than in good faith, I humbly apologize for my failure to communicate that with you. And I hope you will grant me a little grace on that. And I will certainly do the same to you. Um, I think it's perfectly fine to disagree with where freedom and rights end. I just want people to understand my perspective on the importance of protecting freedom and rights at the time that it's most uncomfortable to do so. And, uh, and again, if you're still with this video, take all of the proper precautions for, for coronavirus, listen to the officials, uh, who tell you how you should prepare for it. Have a, have a couple weeks of food on hand, have transportation ready, uh, you know, just in case you do need to move for whatever reason. Um, avoid going out as much as possible. Self-isolation is a good thing as much as you are able to do uh, economically and reasonably uh, while maintaining your safety, okay? Do those things, stay safe, and hey, it's YouTube time because Corona Chan is shutting down the whole planet. Hope to see you guys soon. Have a good day. Peace. Peace.